Good evening. I'm Chuck Olenek. I'm a Ukrainian-American baptized with the name Yaroslav. That's also the name that I go by in the Society for Creative Anachronism, where I'm known as Yaroslav the Persistent. And I've been researching Slavic mythology and folklore and history and culture, and I decided that I would use my YouTube channel to share this information that I've been gathering for decades and that's kind of in the hopes that people might, you know, as far as like the visual learners, they might get into the idea of exploring, developing an Eastern European persona. So, this latest chapter of Tales of the Borderland, number 117, I decided it's time to talk about dragons and snakes. Um, I've mentioned dragons in previous chapters uh, where they're usually fighting some bogatir or some other hero, but I haven't really gone into it in depth. So let's do that. First of all, dragons appear in the folklore all over Eastern Europe. Ukrainians, Russians, Poles, Serbs, Croatians, Macedonians, Slovenes, they call them Zmi or something similar. Even the Romanians, who don't speak a Slavic language, they speak a Romance language, they call them Zmiu, which sounds like it's a borrowed word, maybe corrupted a little, but then, hey, look at their neighbors, they're surrounded by Slavs. However, the Slovaks call the dragon Sarkon, and both the Slovaks and their neighbors, the Czechs, both use the word drak which sounds like it was a borrowed word. So as me can be beast-like, could be human-like. Sometimes it's wooing women. Usually it's uh, the chief antagonist in Russian or Rus literature. And by the way, a female dragon should be called a Zmeya, at least in uh, Russian folk fiction. And there's a tendency to have the gender affect the behavior. Uh, the prose fairy tale versions usually have male dragons and the Bellini poetry, uh, the epic poetry tended to have female dragons and the male dragons are out to captivate a princess or a maiden as a love interest. Oh, also as far as appearance the Russians me is described as being covered in either green or red scales and iron claws. The Zmi is usually depicted with multiple heads. Uh three, six, nine, twelve. See multiples of three. And a three, six, nine, and twelve headed dragon is defeated on successive nights by the hero of the tale Ivan the peasant's son and the little man the size of a finger with the twelve-headed one hardest to kill. <laughs> well, duh. So there is a Bulgarian version of St. George and the Dragon and it's George of the Flowers and he cuts off the uh, three heads of the dragon and when the hero accomplishes its destruction, severs all these heads, rivers of fertility are said to flow and this song about St. George's fight with the uh, Zmi or the dragon occurs in ritual spiritual verse that people are supposed to sing around St. George's Day. There's another variant of this same story where three rivers gush out of the stumps of where the dragon's heads were and typically one is of corn, one is of red wine, and one is of milk and honey and these were to benefit the crop growers and the vineyard growers or winemakers and the beekeepers and shepherds respectively. The Zme which shows up in a number of skazke, uh, those are like wonder tales, fairy tales, and in the Bellini, uh, those are epic ballads you know, like hero stories, may appear as a character with Zmi or Zmeevich is a proper name. And these may exhibit more human-like qualities, such as courting women. The Zmi that gets killed by the bogatir Dobrinya Nikitich in the Belina Dobrinya and the Dragon, 
I cover that one in Tales of the Borderlands 61. Could be male, could be female. This one happened to be female. It may happen to be Zme Gorinish, a uh, dragon son of a mountain, you know, translation of the name. Or it may be, like in the Dobrinya story, a she dragon without a name. It happened to be capable of flight and it abducted a princess from Kiev by flying there. There's lots of tales where Azmi doesn't look at all like a dragon. Here's one on shape shifting Horenika, a sorceress related to Horenish the dragon, appears to Dobrinya Nikitich in the guise of an old hag and challenges him to a fight armed with sword and a lance that reaches into the skies. She may also be an incarnation of Baba Yaga. Dobrinya seems to run into a lot of dragon-related problems. So the Zmi can do its shape-shifting thing, and it can turn into a handsome youth and become a lover. And in that form of the, the handsome youth, it ends up enthralling the sister of, or maybe the wife of, Ivan Tsarevich in different versions of the tale The Milk of Wild Beasts. This happens in the tale Dobrynya and Marina or Marinka. No, Marina is a sorceress who beguiles young Dobrynya. However, Tugarin Zmeevich in Dobrynya and Marinka plays a fleeting role as the lover of Marina the sorceress and is instantly killed early in the tale by Dobrynya, which triggers Marina's anger towards the young bogatir. The tale ends in usual Slavic fashion. The hero at last cuts off the sorceress's head. We'll get back to Tugarin later because he's kind of involved, you know. So there's another favorite topic of folk songs. There's a male Zmi lover who may marry a woman and carry her off to the underworld. Um, or there is the female Zme who falls in love with a shepherd. Okay, when a Zme falls in love with someone, with, okay, a woman, she may, there's a quote, pine, languish, become pale, and neglect herself, and generally act strangely. And the victim that's stricken with this condition could only be cured by, let's see, some stories say bathing in an infusion of certain herbs. And then there's also another version that involves uh, the Black Wedding, which I talked about in uh, Borderland uh, 104. The Black Wedding. This May in these Bulgarian stories was depicted as a man with wings under his arms. He often tries to entice a woman to marry him and she'd begin to suffer the symptoms as he secretly visits her. In order to save her unwed daughter, her mother would quickly organize the wedding and that would somehow save her. All right, the shape of the Zmi in Bulgaria, that's kind of an opportunity to talk about the children of the Zmi. And sometimes they're called the sons of Zmi or Zmeevich, being their patronymic surname. And they're recognized as monsters with human qualities or humans with monstrous qualities. Tugarin Zmeevich, literally that's Tugarin Dragon Son, is one such being with anthropomorphic characteristics. He's sometimes known as a Zme Bogatir, or a serpent hero, a man-like dragon, or sometimes a human-like character with dragon-like traits who appears in Russian or Kievan Rus heroic literature. The name Tugaren may symbolize Turkic or Mongol steppe peoples, so he's sometimes illustrated that way. Tugarin's referred to as a pagan, and he's been given overlays of a Tatar tyrant around the folkloric dragon. The half-human quality that's borne out in the name uh, Zme Bogatir, or serpent hero, given him, which I'm still trying to figure out how you call such a creature a hero when he doesn't behave in a heroic fashion. Uh, okay. 
He's able to ride a horse like a human being in the folktale Alyosha Popovich. Okay, Tukin is a ghastly piece of work. You know, in Lombardy, brutish creature, twice the girth of an oak tree and nearly as tall. His eyes an arrow's length apart, his ears a dozen vershoks long. This was Tugarin in Tales of the Borderland 55, Alyosha Popovich and Tugarin. Tugarin's quite the glutton, which is suggestive of a dragon in some of these tales. However, he still retains human form, even though he's freaking ugly. Even in the scene where he's displaying this extraordinary feat of he's devouring a whole swan and he's moving it from cheek to cheek and he's spitting out the bones. Tugren also has flying wings like a dragon, but in some songs they rationalize these as paper wings, a device attached to the horse. Tugren thus faces off against the bogatir Alyosha Popovich and is killed by the bogatir. There's another kin of Zmei Gorinich. Nemal Chelovek. Uh, Chelovek is man, right? Well, so, where Gordonich is a terrible dragon, Nemal Chelovek, he's a terrible sorcerer. And depending on which version you run into, he's either the nephew of Gordonich or he is the uncle of Gordonich. I'll tell Nemal's story in the next video. Uh, more dragon stuff. Looking at Russian lore, especially the dragon tales. I just wanted to say dragon tales. You'll run into the name Chudo Yudo. The Chudo Yodu, and it's hard to not say Yoda. The Chudo Yodu is a multi-headed dragon that appears in some wonder tale variants, usually considered to be water dwelling, which makes sense considering he lives beyond the river Smorodina. And the name may suggest Stench River. That is, it's the realm of the dead, reached by crossing the Kalinov Bridge, or the White Hot Bridge, and is one of the guardians of the water of life and death. Some legends portray him as the brother of Koshe the Deathless, and we'll run into him in a later video. Hey, if he's a brother of Koshe the Deathless, that makes him an offspring of the witch Baba Yaga. Others present him as a personification of the witch in her most foul form. And of course, we'll meet her later on, too. Okay, some other Zmei stuff. Uh, the Zmei and the Chudo Yudo are considered masters of weather or water. Chudo Yudo's name traditionally was invoked in times of drought. In pre-Christian Russia, jagged flashes of lightning were believed to be dragons as well as being associated with the thunder god, Perun. All right. There's a notion thought to have been inspired by the tornado of a Slavic dragon that dips its tail into a river or a lake and siphons up all the water and is ready to cause floods now that it's done that. While in Romanian folklore, the dragons aren't doing the weather control. It's... Um, weather controlling wizards called Solomonari who are riding the dragons. And in Bulgaria, the Zmi, the bringer of drought, okay, so we're back to the drought thing, was considered the adversary of Saint Ilya or Elijah, who was identified with Perun before the Christians showed up. Okay, so where do baby dragons come from? Well, when a boy dragon and a girl dragon really like each other, no, it's, even though there was the dragon in the Dobrinya and the dragon story, she gave birth to what were referred to as pups. Snakes can become dragons. Lithuanian scholars point out that the words me is connected with the idea of an earthly being and that which creeps underground. Okay, we got a couple of terms, uh, smok and smok. Now, so smok is dragon, smok is sucker. And that can signify a dragon, it could also just can, it, it could also just be an ordinary snake. And there's Slavic folk tales in which a smok, when it reaches a certain age, 
turns into a Zmi, turns into a dragon. Uh, in Ukrainian folklore, it takes seven years. Uh, in Belarusian folklore, it takes a hundred. Uh, Bulgarians say 40. And um, locally in Ukraine, around Lutsk, uh, the rainbow is called Tsmok or Sucker. So it's kind of related to a dragon thing. Um, it's said to be a tube that guzzles water, like the dragon, you know, from the sea and the rivers and carries the moisture up to the clouds. Here's the last bit of dragon lore that we're going to explore. Some prehistoric structures, notably the Serpent's Wall or the Snake Ramparts near Kiev. Oh, and I covered this topic in Tales of the Borderland 52. They've been associated with dragons being forced to plow them. Okay, so all this is is a condensed version, an introduction to Eastern European dragons or Zmi. Uh, if you go into the literature, there's all kinds of variations, all, in, all sorts of insane differences with the Macedonian uh, ones and the Slovenian ones and the Croatian ones and Bulgarian ones. And oh, and by the way, it depends which part of Bulgaria you're in because a lot of the information is contradictory. All right, next time out, I'm going to talk about the sorcerer Nemal Chelovic. Until then, do pobaczenia.